Starting after Labor Day, our pre-K through fourth grade students will return to their schools. For those choosing to remain virtual, a little more information about this model. We chose to keep our full-time virtual students with their assigned teachers and classmates because it allows for better support from the people they've come to know and trust. Students will continue to work with their assigned teacher and will receive instruction in reading, writing, math, and related arts. Two daily enrichment sessions will also be delivered by the librarian, our building specialist, or counselor. Virtual students will learn the same content as their peers who attend on-site classes. Some of the material students will be taught virtually may be in the form of a recording, and we did this for two reasons. To better accommodate families as they work with these assignments into their personal schedules, and because young students often need to pause and revisit the content of the lessons. Students will also have the unique opportunity to meet a community of educators from their school and see lessons taught by other grade level teachers. We use multiple teachers for various reasons, but most importantly, teachers frequently use their common or team planning time to develop shared lessons in any school year. This is no exception. It also exposes your child to experts that are featured in our curricular resources. More details are included in the latest update to our operations plan. And in addition, I encourage you to watch a short animated video that will help explain virtual learning further with your family. In his weekly press conference this week, Governor Holcomb introduced, through Dr. Box, a new set of metrics to assess the wellness of Hoosier counties with regard to COVID. With those metrics, there were also recommendations for the operation of schools within the counties. While we appreciate the work that went into clarifying and simplifying the metrics and in establishing the recommendations for schools, we've been adjusting our plans to align with the recommendations of our local health department. We recognize that the recommendations of the two health departments are significantly different. Consequently, we will be working in the next few days to determine to what degree we can honor both sets of recommendations. It may require changes once again to our plan, and I wanted you to know about that possibility. In the meantime, we closely monitor the COVID data reported by our local and state health departments, but we also track among our staff and students positive COVID cases and those who must quarantine as a known close contact. This information will be entered into a dashboard which you will be able to access through our website. We will publish this information weekly and expect to have our first report online the week of September 14th. It is our goal to be transparent and give you a snapshot of what's happening in our school community related to COVID. This pandemic has caused us to make some very difficult decisions, as you well know. One of the toughest was just made on Thursday this week. Due to budgetary reasons, we are having to implement a temporary employment suspension for some of our food service employees who work in the intermediate, junior high, and high schools. I'm sharing this with you to clear up some misinformation being shared online. These staff members are eligible for unemployment benefits, but they have also been encouraged to fill some of the open positions for much needed substitute teachers and bus drivers. We're hopeful that as soon as we are able to safely reopen the other schools, these dedicated staff members will return to their positions. Food services for virtual and on-site students will continue to be available as it always has. Thank you and have a nice weekend.